you may remember that a little while ago I made a video about why processors were square and wafers were circular. If you've seen the thumbnail for this video, you'll know that that's a little bit of a lie. What's your minimum specification? Well, shucks, the cloud is here, but which cloud do you trust? Manage your infrastructure with Linode, the biggest independent cloud services provider. Linode offers double the database performance per data than the big four, and now enhances it further with new NVMe-backed block storage. Spin up a game server, website, personal VPN, or something more bespoke today with a free $100 60-day credit at linode.com slash techdeppotato. So back when I stated that processors were square rectangular, um, because wafers were circular, was due to the way the dicing saws work. It's essentially very easy just to go straight through the wafer again and again and again, and so you get your uh, rectangular shape. And that's what a lot of silicon is made of today. I'm here at Disco. They're the uh, leading processor dicing company. Uh, I've got Dylan from uh, Sammy Analysis here with me. Um, and. Uh, at the booth, you know, they've got dicing saws and they're showing some machines and it's great to get some footage of that. Uh, they've even got a sapphire wafer over there. Um, unfortunately, they won't let me take that one out. However, this is what's interesting. You've seen it in the thumbnail. It's hexagonal chips on a wafer. Um, been speaking to the guys here. This is not a new technology. Um, they're using something called uh, laser saw stealth dicing. So you're essentially using the laser uh, to separate the chips when you manufacture them. You can still manufacture them in the normal way. However, uh, you know, your reticle is still square. Uh, but with, with the dicing, you can make your hexagons, you can make your octagons. And then in order to make sure that when you separate the silicon, separate the silicon dies, so they don't break each other in the corners, you, use, you put the wafer on a film and the film kind of stretches it all out. And eventually it provides enough force that you get to where we are here with the, uh, with the silicon kind of stretched out, and you can kind of see at the edges roughly some, some bits where, uh, I'll show some more close-up images where it's kind of stretched out. And the idea is that after you do this, your packaging machines can come and pick one up and uh, take it to wherever they need. Um, yeah, we're, we're speaking to, to, to the guys here at Disco. Um, they've got customers who wanted um, circular uh, chips for, 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 for their use cases, and that's a bit hard to do, so they went with octagons. Uh, but we did ask, you know, why do people want these size chips? You may think, well, it makes sense, you know, to use most of the wafer. Why isn't everything um, this size? So what moving to, say, a hexagon or an octagon does is it increases the shoreline around, uh, around the chip. So if you needed more surdes links, more off-chip I.O., more stuff that needs to be right on the edge of the silicon, then doing this essentially provides uh, that uh, extra space to do that. Uh, but however, the, the key customers apparently for this sort of technology are medical, uh, te really small medical devices. We're talking in the order of five square millimeters of silicon here, um, just because they need to fit in very specific uh, packages. You know, think of your hearing aid and what's the ideal size for a chip to be in that environment, you know, to also have all the logic and the Wi-Fi you need inside there. So that's really the market where this is. Uh, yeah, like I said, they, uh, they said this technology has been around since the 90s. It's not new. We're unlikely to see it on the leading edge uh, just because, well, this is you know, an 8-inch wafer and 12-inch uh, wafers were more expensive. You actually lose some throughput here uh, if you're dicing it this way because you've got the laser that goes in and out rather than just a saw that just keeps going through uh, the wafer. So it's really interesting to see this up close. Um, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily going to be a, a future-looking technology, but there are definitely certain markets that need it.